How to do HDR photography on the DJI Mavic Mini, that coming up right after this. Welcome back to the channel everyone. If this is your first time here, my name's Ryan, and on this channel you're going to find all kinds of content about drones, drone related content, photography and videography related content, product reviews, tech reviews, and all sorts of other fun things. So when you're done watching this video, browse around the channel, and if you find anything of value or interest, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. It's greatly appreciated. As I mentioned before, today we're going to be talking about how to do HDR photography with the DJI Mavic Mini. We'll also be giving away two DJI Care Refresh subscriptions for the Mavic Mini at the end of the video, so stick around. Now there are loads of tutorials on what HDR is, but essentially you take photographs in different ranges, so one that's correctly exposed, one that's overexposed, and one that's underexposed. You then merge these photos together into one HDR or high dynamic range image. Now these images can look amazing but make sure you don't overcook them. That just means don't push it too far. Most DJI drones thus far have had an option to do AEB photos. AEB stands for auto exposure bracketing. Now this auto exposure bracketing function would automatically take the correctly exposed photo, the overexposed photo, and the underexposed photo. With the Mavic Mini being an entry-level drone, I think DJI just chose to leave this feature out for simplicity so it wouldn't overwhelm a new drone pilot. So without this AAB feature, how do we take the necessary photos to compile an HDR photograph? Well, I'm going to show you right now. This evening I went to one of my favorite places to fly that has a good cityscape in the background. The sky was just kind of plain, it was getting close to sunset, so I thought it would be an excellent time to show the possibilities of HDR photography. All right, so here we were out at the site and took off. It was kind of windy, so we kind of need to watch when it's windy out. You'll have to take your photographs a little quicker because the drone will tend to wander. But So I got lined up. This is my first correctly exposed photograph. And then we get into doing the overexposed by hitting the EV button, going to the plus 0.7, then again up to plus 1.3, take the photo then down to negative 0.7, take the photo, and then down to negative 1.3, and again, take the photo. So then all you need to do is bring the drone back, land it, take the photos to your computer, and start working on them. All right, so now that we're done flying and we get the memory card out of our drone, we do have a few prerequisites on how to create an HDR photograph from these files we just captured. You will need to have a piece of software in order to compile these. There are several different ones out there. You, of course, you can do it with Photoshop. A lot of you may already have that. You can do it with a program by Skylum called Aurora HDR. Uh, there's another one out there also called Photomatix. Uh, there's a bunch of others as well. Uh, but you will need some software. This is uh, this is kind of a uh, involved process. So here we go. Now here's the uh, images I captured. If you remember, I, re I captured five in a row. It's these five right here, 67 through 71. I'll just flip these on the screen so you can see them individually. Now the first one, this is the properly exposed photo. And then as we click through this, we started overexposing. So this is plus 0.7 EV and then this is plus 1.3 EV. And if you remember, we went the other direction, we started to over or underexpose. Uh, this is the negative 0.7 EV, and then this is the negative 1.3 EV. All right, so my favorite program of choice to use is Aurora HDR. I find it does an excellent job. Uh, so here's Aurora HDR. In there, I, all I need to do is hit open image. I select those same five photos and hit open. And you'll see that we have, it has our five different exposures on there. 
Uh, we do want to make sure we check alignment because if you remember it does kind of bounce around a little bit because of the wind you probably saw that as I was flipping through those images and then lastly in here I want to make sure we remove any ghosts ghosting happens when uh, there's movement like cars driving those sorts of things and I usually pick the uh, good exposure the perfectly exposed one uh, the EV 0.0, .0. So after we do that, we can hit the Create HDR button. And then after it goes through the aligning process and the de-ghosting process, we will be presented with our tone mapped image. All right, and then we have our tone mapped image. Now, right off the bat, it looks pretty good. There are a bunch of presets that we can uh, choose from in Aurora HDR. Uh, you can start with one of their presets and fine tune from there. Um, cityscape tends to look good that's getting into the overcooked method that I was telling you earlier it's kind of overdoing it so I tend to bring these back just a little bit um, until they look the way I like them and then you can go further in and you can adjust your highlights and your shadows uh, you can uh, add some denoising if you want uh, and all kinds of other things that's uh, for a different tutorial but this is uh, kind of down and dirty how you get in and do an HDR in Aurora so there's that and then let's talk about in Photoshop all right now bringing up Photoshop Photoshop has an automated process of merging photos and it's called merge to HDR Pro so you just hit file automate then merge to HDR Pro we hit the browse button we find those same files so it's 67 through 70 one and then hit OK we do also want to make sure this attempt to automatically align source images is checked and we can hit the OK button now as it's starting to build this you'll see it's putting each of the images on a layer it is also creating a smart object and merge to HDR Pro over here on the side. And then when it's finally done, you get the merge to HDR Pro dialog box that pops up. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, especially if you it was a windy day and you had some movement while you're taking your photos, um, you might see some ghosting of objects uh, as it couldn't quite get them out. So by hitting this remove ghost, you'll see here, especially at this tower, it pops in in correctly and then there are two different methods from here that we can go um, there's the 32-bit method this gives us the most dynamic range if we stay in the 32-bit we get a lot more colors that way uh, if you want to stick with an easy method you can go into the 16-bit um, and modify uh, all your settings here and in this case we we bump up our strength a little bit a tad bit on the radius and then you can drop your shadows down bring your highlights up um, bring up your vibrance and saturation and then you can kind of see that we're starting to get back to where uh, where the aurora hdr program got us or uh, one of the methods i like to use in here we can instead of doing um, the 16 bit we can go to 32 bit and then make sure this box complete toning and adobe camera raw is checked now i know these aren't raw files on the mavic mini but you can still do your toning in adobe camera raw so all you do is hit the uh, tone and acr button Then here in one second, it'll bring up the Adobe Camera Raw dialog box. And here it is. Now, just right off the bat, just by hitting the auto button, auto actually tends to get you really, really pretty close um, to a natural looking HDR photo. And then you can fine tune from there. Again, bringing, bringing up your shadows and highlights and, and uh, doing all those sorts of things, adding a little bit of clarity, add a little bit of dehaze, um, modify your uh, vibrance and saturation, um, all those sorts of things. So play with that. Um, that's how you do it in Photoshop. All right, so now that we've 
learned how to compile these. Let's look at the results. This file is the original file. That was our properly exposed photo. This is the photo we created in Photoshop. And lastly, this is the file that we created in Aurora HDR. So one of the things you'll notice in HDR photos, especially when uh, you're getting closer to sunset, um, you might get some noise in your skies, especially if you do um, really high levels of underexposure. So in this case, I did um, a couple stops of underexposed photos. So you will start to get some of this noise in the sky. And that's, you know, I recommend, you know, doing your photo photography in as bright a conditions as you can. The noise wouldn't be as apparent if I didn't push it quite as far. You can see back on this image where it wasn't pushed quite as far. There is still some noise in the sky, uh, but it's not as uh, obvious in this case. So again, taking photos at the lowest ISO that you can is preferred. So by doing so, you have to have more light. As you can see, the Mavic Mini is quite a capable drone, and now you'll be able to take your photos even further using HDR photography. So that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below, and I'll be glad to answer them. Also, I'd love to see the HDR photos that you create with your Mavic Mini, so comment below with a link to your work. Now on to the DJI Care Refresh giveaway. DJI has given us two coupon codes, good for a DJI Care Refresh for your Mavic Mini. As part of this contest, we're giving away two codes. So to be eligible to, to win these, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment below, I love my Mavic Mini. I'll respond back to the comments of the lucky winners, so watch your YouTube notifications. That's it for this video. If you found this content useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified when we come out with new tutorials or product reviews. As always, Fly safe and bye for now.